The nozzles on my boat are my rudders, their prop guards, and they increase efficiency. But because there is damage below, I had to take them off, and when I did that I saw that they are in absolutely horrid condition. So I didn't listen to all the people telling me to just trash them and figure out a new solution, but actually went to a shipyard and listened to what the pros had to say in terms of how to fix a hopeless piece of plastic like this one. So in this video I'll show you how we went from this state to an actually nice looking functioning nozzle that won't break down anytime soon and I'll share all the pros tips with you. So stay tuned. I went to a shipyard that specializes on building and repairing lifeboats. So they told me exactly what to do to fix these nozzles and how to get them back into shape. I've done one partially failed small fiberglass repair before, otherwise I don't have any prior experience. So this is a beginner learning on the job to do it like the pros, or at least to get as close as possible to that. The first step was to use an angle grinder to grind open all the damages, to uh, get to the bottom of all the cracks, and then to sand down even more so the fiberglass is visible and all the gel coat is removed. That proved easier in theory than in practice because once we started grinding down all these things we found that it's actually not a classical fiberglass piece but a fiberglass shell that was filled with resin in production. That resin in some places was missing completely so that you had a hollow shell to work with. If you keep grinding that, then there is no nozzle left after all. And that's where most of the YouTube tutorials that work in a clean white room with a simulated fiberglass damage will leave you. It's just not possible to do it the clean and uh, textbook way because for example here you have this white uh, fiberglass with not much resin in it. If you keep grinding down until you get to the bottom of it, there you have it, you have a hole and you can't keep grinding down more. So you have to compromise on removing as much material as possible without completely getting rid of the contours and then the next step is to add some resin. So this was a fiber resin that uh, the shipyard has in their shelves. So basically it's polyester resin with, uh, with glass fibers in it. So we used that to fill all the bigger holes and um, the major cracks that we couldn't grind down completely. When working with polyester resin, the hardener is only a catalyzer. That means it's not as critical as it is with epoxy resin to have exactly um, the right mix. Nevertheless, how much hardener you put in there will significantly influence how long you have to work with the material. So you should either stick to what's in the technical data sheet or change it slightly so that it fits your needs. So what we started out with was filling it with this um, fiber filler or uh, polyester resin with fibers in it to try to match the contour of the original nozzle in the places where we had to completely grind it down. While this stuff is more structurally stable than a typical base filler, you don't want this to be on the outside of your part in the end. So if you hit it, it will just split off. Um, that being said, you need some contour to laminate the fiberglass on top of. Therefore, we're filling everything so that we have something to work with and we have a surface that after sanding is flat to then laminate on. This is what it looks like after putting it on. 
you see that it's a rough surface, but it fairly closely matches what the original nozzle contours were looking like. So that's the first step. Afterwards, the next step, as always in anything related to boat building, is sanding. So try to sand it down to the contour and rather more, like rather set it down more than less because you're putting on additional material with a fiberglass. The mats they're using are 450 grams per square meter, which is more than the typical boat building um, fiberglass that you get, but they say it's much better to work with uh, and you're much quicker because you don't have to put on as many layers. They always work in double layers, so they never put a single piece on top of it. So basically you put one piece down you put some uh, polyester resin over it, then you put another piece on top of it, um, get both soaked with resin, and then put them onto the part and laminate them on. Usually you can put up to six layers of uh, glass mats on top of each other in, uh, in one single step. After that, you'll probably want to wait until it hardened, then sand it down a bit and do another one so that it doesn't fall off. After putting on uh, quite a bit of resin so that it hopefully doesn't drip down too much but is pretty soaked, you start rolling it with the laminating roller or thin roller I think is what some people call it to get rid of any air bubbles in the material. Here it's very important to find the right pressure point. So if you put on too little pressure, air bubbles will stay in the material and you'll have spots that are weaker than others. If you put on too much pressure, you're gonna push out all the resin and therefore you'll be left with fiberglass that isn't properly laminated. So it takes a bit of uh, practice if you see the material getting white where you've rolled, that means you've put on too much pressure. If you can still spot some air bubbles you can move around, then you have not put on enough pressure. Make sure to clean off your tools before the resin hardens. The shipyard uses acetone, but that's a very dangerous chemical. If you choose to go down that path, then please uh, get yourself familiarized with all the safety precautions necessary. So, this is what the nozzles looked like after the first laminating session. And by saying the first, I mean the first of a couple. Here you see some problem we've encountered. We have laminated around the edge, which caused some air to get trapped in there, a weaker part of a resin, which we had to sand back down because that part won't be a good base for laminating fervor on top of it. Basically, in order to laminate around a sharp corner, you need to be a master of fiberglass work, which I am clearly not. So if you are not, then don't try to go around the corner, but just do both sides individually and then sand it down and you'll still get a pretty nice edge. After another sanding session of a newly laminated fiberglass in which I had to be very careful to not sand too deep so we don't get rid of all the new material, followed by listening to some German folk music because apparently that's what people at shipyards do, I used a grinder attachment on a drill for any uh, ridges that are too big for the orbital grinder. Uh, followed by a session of manually grinding down the surface and then we were ready to do the next session of laminating. Here we actually followed the steps that you see in all these YouTube videos about fiberglass works pretty exactly. So mark down the complete area on a fiberglass mat, cut it out and then keep getting smaller in the new cutouts until you have this kind of ascending size of different pieces that 
when stacked on top of each other um, will result in a piece of fiberglass that fills the hole completely. For the 450 gram per square meter mats, one thing that's very convenient is that each mat is adding about one millimeter of uh, layer height. Therefore, it's pretty easy to calculate how many of the layers you need. With the new technique of not laminating around the corner, but rather laminating both sides individually, it was much easier to get close to the edge without uh, having any air bubbles in there. At the same time, you always have some material left over on the edge that you need to get rid of afterwards. What I did in the first try was sanding it down uh, with the orbital sander afterwards, but a nice little trick that one of the shipyard workers uh, told me is just cut it off when it's not quite hardened yet. So not when it's fresh, um, but when it's almost finished with hardening, it's very easy to cut it off. The same thing obviously works for resin that ran down the side of your piece um, just as well. You cut it when it's almost finished hardening. For the next session of laminating a few layers of fiberglass, here is a more detailed step-by-step -step, uh, tutorial. So you mark the piece, the, the full piece that you want to laminate um, with a Sharpie on your fiberglass mat. Then you cut that out. You can then use the part that you've cut out to cut out another one just like it on the next uh, fiberglass mat. And while doing that, you can just remove or add uh, an additional centimeter uh, or half an inch, I guess, um, of material so that you have these ascending or descending sizes. Then you uh, pre-soak them in resin on some, uh, some flat surface and put them on. If they're small pieces, you can just put them on with one glove. They uh, are very, very adamant about only touching the fiberglass with one hand so that your other hand stays clean and doesn't um, make all the tools sticky as I definitely did the first couple times. If you're putting on a bigger piece, that's a bit trickier. So you use your foam roller and one hand in order to put the piece on. It doesn't matter whether you hit the spot where you want to have it exactly, because you can very easily move it um, after the fact. Even while rolling, you, uh, you move it into the exact position you want to have it in. And then with the, with the laminating roller, you get rid of any unevenness in the material and obviously all the air bubbles you can find. You put up as many layers as necessary until you have a bit more material than you want to have so that you have something to sand down to the original contours, followed by cutting off all the extra material a few minutes before the resin hardened out completely. If you find the right point in time, it's a very satisfying job. And then it's basically just rinse and repeat. You sand down the surfaces, you check whether there's still material missing, then you laminate again until you have fixed all the missing material, all the uneven surfaces, and you're back to the original contour. After a little bit of filling and quite a lot of sanding, this is now the final result. It may not look like much because it hasn't been painted yet, but all the contours are smooth, we don't have any cracks in them anymore, and now these nozzles can be used for the years to come without worrying about them too much. Make sure to also watch this video that Google thinks is a great match, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for the next video. Until then, good luck with all your projects and see you next time.